We're about to read Stargirl Chapter 10. Um, our characters are now changing. They are becoming more of their own characters and more independent, less conformist. Stargirl is now a little bit more popular. So let's see what happens next. All my resistance to putting Stargirl on hot seat vanished. Okay, I said to Kevin, let's do it. Schedule her. He started off. I grabbed his arm. Wait, ask her first. He laughed, <laughs> right, like she's gonna say no. No one had ever said no to the hot seat. Any reluctance to answering personal or embarrassing questions always yielded to the lure of appearing on TV. If anyone could resist that lure, I figured it would be Stargirl. That day after school, Kevin came at me thumbs up and grinning. It's a go, she said yes. First, I was surprised. This didn't fit my impression of her. I didn't know that this was an early glimpse of something I was soon to see much more of. Behind the dazzling talents and differentness, she was far more normal than I had realized. Then I was elated. We yipped, we high-fived, we saw visions of our most popular show ever. This was mid-January. We set a date of February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. We wanted a full month for build-up. With my resistance now gone, I jumped in with both feet. We planned a promo campaign. We got art students to do posters. We jotted down questions for Kevin to ask in case the jury ran out. Fat chance of that happening. We didn't have to post the usual jury notice. Dozens of kids volunteered. And then things changed again. In the courtyard of our school stood a five foot sheet of plywood in the shape of a road runner. It was a bulletin board, strictly for student use, always taped and tacked with messages and announcements. One day we found the following computer printout taped to the plywood road runner. I pledge allegiance to United Turtles of America and to the fruit bats of Borneo, one planet in the Milky Way, incredible with justice and black bean burritos for all. Handwritten across the bottom were the words, this is how she says the Pledge of Allegiance. No one had to tell us who she was. Apparently, she was overheard in homeroom as we said the pledge each morning. As far as I knew, we were not a particularly patriotic bunch. I didn't hear people saying they were offended. Some thought it was funny. Some giggled and nodded knowingly as if to say, there she goes again. On the following mornings, more than one kid was heard reciting the new pledge. Within days, a new story wildfired through the student body. A senior girl, Anna Grisdale, lost her grandfather after a long illness. The funeral took place on a Saturday morning. For a while, everything seemed routine. The crowd of people at the church, the line of cars with their headlights on, the small group clustered around the grave for the final farewell. After the brief graveside service, the funeral director handed everyone a long-stemmed flower. Upon leaving, each mourner laid his or her flower over the casket. This was when Anna Grisdale first noticed Stargirl. Through her own tears, Anna could see that Stargirl was crying also. She wondered if Stargirl had been at the church as well. Even more, she wondered why Stargirl was there at all. Could she have been friends with her grandfather without Anna's knowing it? Anna's mother asked her who the unfamiliar girl was. After, the mourners were invited to Anna's house for lunch. About 30 came. There was a buffet of cold cuts and salad and cookies. Stargirl was there chatting with members of the family, but not eating or drinking anything. Suddenly, Anna heard her mother's voice. It was no louder than the others, but it was different. What are you doing here? Sudden si stillness. Everyone staring. They were in front of the picture window. Anna had never seen her mother so angry. Mrs. Grisdale had been very close to her father. They had built an addition to their house so she could live with them. She glared down at Stargirl. Answer me. Stargirl gave no reply. You didn't even know him, did you? Stargirl said nothing. Did you? 
And then Anna's mother was flinging open the front door and pointing, as if banishing her to the desert. Leave my house! Stargirl left. Danny Pike was nine years old. He loved to ride the bicycle and had gotten one for his birthday. One day after school, he lost control and plowed into a mailbox. He broke his leg, but that wasn't the worst of it. A blood clot developed. He was airlifted to Children's Hospital in Phoenix, where he was operated on. For a while, it was touch and go. But within a week, he was on his way back home. All this was reported in the Micah Times, as was the celebration when Danny arrived at his home on Pinion Lane. The five-column photo in the Times showed Danny on his father's shoulders, surrounded by a mob of neighbors. In the foreground was a new bike with a big sign that read, Welcome home, Danny. It wasn't until days later that the front page photo appeared on the Plywood Roadrunner. We gathered around to see something we hadn't noticed before. An arrow from a thick red felt marker pointed at one of the tiny faces into the frame. It was the face of a girl beaming as if Danny Pike were her little brother back from the dead. It was Stargirl. And then there was the bike. The various members of the Pike family, parents, grandparents, at all, each thought someone else had bought Danny the new bicycle. Several days went by before they discovered, to their great surprise, that none of them had. So where did the bike come from? High schoolers who heard the story and saw pictures had a pretty good idea. Apparently the Pikes did not. The bike became the focus of a family squabble. Mr. Pike was mad because nobody he asked would admit to buying the bike, and probably because he hadn't done it himself. Mrs. Pike was mad because no way, not for at least one year, would she allow Danny back on wheels. One night, the new, still unridden bike wound up at the Pike's front curb with the trash cans. By the time the trash collector came the next day, it was gone. Danny got a BB gun instead. The Pledge of Allegiance, the Grisdale Funeral, the Danny Pike Affair, all these things were noted, but they had no immediate impact on Stargirl's popularity at school. Not so with cheerleading and the boys' basketball season. So why do you think Stargirl is involved in these things? Why do you think she is in that picture of Danny Pike? If she bought that bike, why would she do that? Why did she go to the funeral? I don't know. All right, chapter 11 is kind of long, so we're going to do that on another video. See you guys later.